Good to see y'all. So it got Jeremy and Garrett, right? Yep. All right, man. man. Uh, so I don't know if y'all know um, Dee Dee LaHue out of Houston. Oh, yeah. Yeah? We know Dee Dee. Okay. She was the one who actually got me in touch with, uh, with the band, and she said, you got to have these guys on. I was like, I'm all about it. Uh, I mean, as soon as she said, you know, thrash metal, then uh, y'all played with uh, DRI, I was like, I'm in, like from the jump. Right on. The way this podcast, uh, how we roll over here, is um, we just want to know your story, man. Like how y'all two guys meet in the very beginnings, you know, and uh, just we can go back as far into your youth as possible just to get the full story. Okay. Uh, you want to start? Uh, yeah. I mean, um, you know, uh, I used to live in Texas when I was a kid and then I moved out here to Arizona. Um, and then I think you lived, uh, uh, you live somewhere else too. Yeah. I'm actually then, from California. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we, I get, we both ended up moving here to Arizona and we just met each other in sixth grade. And so we were friends, uh, since then. And then just, um, I think we went to a different junior high, but like at the same time, like, like on his own, he picked up guitar and then I picked up drums and then it just kind of like, was like, we met again and we were like, Oh shit. (laughs) Yep. You know? So, and then, uh, we just kind of like listened to the same music. So yeah. Jammed all the time. What kind of music y'all jamming to it back then? Oh shit, dog! Like uh, fucking Green Day, and, uh, uh, Lincoln Park, shit like that. Like, hey man, was, I'm not, I'm not knocking world. it. Like, uh, I mean, some of that shit's still good. I'll still crank it sometimes, you know. But like, I wasn't really into like um, uh, back then. I I wasn't listening to like Metallica or anything yet. It was just like, you know, shit like that, and like, um. So I think he actually did drums first before I started playing guitar because you got it for like Christmas or your birthday yeah, yeah. or something like a drum set. Yeah. And then I would come over and he would be jamming and I think he would like show me like Slayer and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, it was like um, it was like the old school Metallica um, and Slayer and um, stuff like that because that was like um, that was like I discovered those bands really from playing like the. Um, the like, if you ever played the the rock band game, yes, or the uh, guitar guitar hero game, absolutely. I was like, um, yeah, and like I remember hearing a uh, painkiller by Judas Priest on the rock band game, and I was like, that that's a fucking badass song. <laughs> oh yeah, and, you know, uh, you know, you know, battery by Metallica, um, all that. I was like, damn, you know, I just liked how the fuck the energy of it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and that was what I um tried pr- tried playing to and tried seeing if I could learn and play it, um. You know, because I just liked how fast it was, and it, um, and it grew. So, yeah, and then that that time, actually just kind of. I'm sorry that that actually killed uh, two of my questions because I had that lined up for y'all. I was like, you know, uh, what are similarities of intent in the Bay Area uh, thrash scene? You know, and I mean, y- y'all grew up on it. Y'all discovered it through rock band, and like from there, you know, y'all just dove headfirst into it, right? As far as far as the yeah, Bay Area thrash yeah. stuff's concerned. Yeah, like, um, I remember around the time when, because we had, like, a band, we were probably, like, 15 or 16 or something, we had a band, and it was just, like, a dumb covers band, and, like, like, the only thing we covered was, like, Linkin Park and shit, what was the other one, like, like, some pop punk shit, you know, shit like that, and, like, um, and I remember we used to jam occasionally on the side with this other guy, who went to our school and that dude could shred like his dad was in like a hair band like ba- back in the day mm-hmm. and like so h- this dude could shred he was playing like had lessons since he was like a little child you know child prodigy bullshit and like we used to jam with him sometimes and like i remember like we were like try to cover raining blood or something like that mm-hmm. and i was like when i like finally got to hear like what raining blood sounded like i was like You know, like, what the fuck is this? Like, (laughs) like, um, because the only thing that's about as fast as like raining blood that I knew up to that point was like some punk rock shit or some like pop punk shit, you know? Yeah. And like, and I was like, you know, that shit was cool because I like the speed and like, I love, I love that energy. You know, I still 
get high off of that energy. Absolutely. You know, but it was like, it was like, holy shit, like nobody sounds like this. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, so it was like pretty cool. It's like a whole new world. And that just like opened up like the can of worms, you know, like that was the, the, the rabbit hole going down, like into the thrash. And, you know, I remember he showed me painkiller and like, I was like, cause he used to drive me to school. Okay. And, um, I remember he's like, yeah, man, check this out. And like, um, put on painkiller or like, uh, hit the lights. We used to jam, hit the lights a lot. You know, we just cranked that shit. And I was like, like when I heard painkiller the first time, I was like, like what the <laughs> fuck? Like, like I, that was like one of the first times I like heard a song and I was like scared. Yeah. I was like, Oh, this is great. Like, you know, like I love this feeling, you know? Oh yeah. I, I, I share a similar feeling, man. Cause like, you know, I'm probably a little older than you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm an eighties kid myself. <clears throat> And one of my good friends who used to drive me to school, he had Kill 'Em All. And mm. I, at, at, to that point, you know, I've heard about Metallica. My, my, at, back then, my favorite Metallica record was probably Ride the Lightning. And I didn't know he did anything prior to that. Didn't know Dave Mustaine was part of Metallica or anything of that nature, you know. And he, he put on uh, Four Horsemen and all that. And I was like, holy shit. And, uh, I, and um, man, I was just totally fucking blown away. And still to this day, man, it's like I asked Sammy Dewey, in fact, last night on a on a podcast record, I said, if you if you ever met James Heffel, what would you say to him? He's like, uh, thank you for everything. And I would say the same thing. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I'd probably do the same thing, too. Like, I mean, that's probably one of the greatest bands of all time, you know, and like even him and like Dave Mustaine and like even, you know, like the Slayer guys, the Exodus guys, like they helped create like this other sound you know and really like we love you know and so many other people do too mm -hmm. so, like they're definitely like you know the the mount rushmore of thrash is like you know those guys oh definitely so man i mean that's that's why they call it the big four <laughs> you know just, oh yeah totally uh, uh so which you think those albums I, I, I mean out of those bands like were the favorite for y'all two Okay, uh, for me, it was always Ride the Ride Lightning. Ride the Lightning. Ride always the Lightning. Jam. Okay, so yeah. like even when I heard like Metallica, Ride the Lightning was like always the one like I, I would like always listen to. Like when I, like on my own, like I wouldn't even say I was a metalhead yet, but like I would be like on YouTube late at night, like listening to that. And I was mm. just like, holy shit, like I got to hear this again. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember um, uh, Ride the Light, Ride the Lightning. Um, and uh, Master of Puppets were the two Metallica records I really uh, uh, listened to a lot. Yeah, when I heard, uh, I think it was uh, Damage Incorporated and Fight Fire with Fire. Mm -hmm. um, those those two songs, I was like, I want to I want to know how to play drums to that. You know, yeah, Cause that um, because I, I love the energy of that. It was dark, uh, but fast and aggressive. Um, but it was also it wasn't just um, it, it wasn't. Uh, just like a complete meat and potato kind of song. Like those actually felt like songs, yeah. you know, a lot of emotion um, and that, you know, they just, um, you know, they, they just felt epic. Um, so that, that was like what I wanted to play. I was like, this sounds badass. you know, fight fire with fire, you know, damage incorporated, uh, battery. And then, um, and then it was, Ride the Lightning was like the whole album I liked, you know. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a single song on on that album that I that I was just like, "Eh, it's okay," you know. Ride the Lightning was kind of the album like every single song back to back. I was like, that was awesome, you know. Um and then, you know, I like I liked Slayer uh too. Um although but I mean, I always gravitated towards yeah, I mean the Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets albums um and then Sepultura was like the next like Sepultura um it was a beneath the remains and a rise i I liked those albums honestly way better than Slayer to be honest <laughs> yeah um the, those two those two albums you know I jammed to a lot and I was like, oh shit, you know it was just even faster and darker yep. and heavier too and that's and, um I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so those were like those are like the records that I um you know the thrash records that like I would listen to on my own all the time was um it was Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets and then it was um it was Arise and Beneath the Remains by Sepultura that I was just like the the 
those were like the top tier for me of like thrash i was like this is that's what i want to play you know yeah that you was could, the kind of style that i liked and y'all could definitely hear that influence in in the uh the record y'all have posted on Bandcamp, man uh i i, I see all those similarities just kind of seep through in your music and y'all pull it off like really i mean the word was thrown around where it's it's epic sounding you know and, and I keep coming back to it. I'm like telling all my friends here in Louisiana, man, it's like, dude, intent, uh, they played New Orleans. We missed them. But he, he, here's the link. I've been sharing it like nonstop ever since, ever since Didi uh, sent it out to me. Hello. So thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, I want to go over some of these uh, name titles, man. I'm just, I'm always curious. Hey, I'm, sure. just, I'm just always curious <laughs> about uh, how artists, you know, come to find the time to flesh out the, the lyrical content the uh, the song titles or whatnot if you we just go on one by one if you want uh okay. how about number 12 looks just like you so with that one okay so um uh have you ever watched the show the twilight zone uh this the the, the older one or, yeah, or, the, or the movie 1960. uh a few episodes it's kind of before my time okay. okay for sure so there's an episode called um number 12 looks just like you okay um and so I'm a big sci-fi guy. So like I love science fiction. I love comic books. Um, you know, I love Star Trek, you know, all that shit. So like I I really like that uh that pulp level of um storytelling. Yeah. Where like it, it really tells you that no matter what happens, you know, whatever where whatever time period you put a human being in, or whatever technology you give to a human being, like the human being still remains. It's just like how they're gonna use the time period to their advantage or, you know, the, um, the technology, right. Um, or, you know, whatever's going on in society at that time. So like the, in the episode, the number 12 looks just like you, it's like this dystopian future where, um, basically when you become a certain age, um, you're like pressured into like changing your body into like, as basically like a cardboard cutout and there's different types. And, um, the the whole episode is this this girl is she finally becomes of age and you know her mom has made the transformation her mom is pressuring her um her best friend just had the operation and um she's now pressuring her and um she's like oh I don't want it I don't want it and like eventually they're like well why not why not it, you know it's harmless it's this that and like um she She's like, well, my dad didn't like it, this, that, and like hit her dad's dead or something. Yeah. And like, um, basically the whole episode goes on. They, they're all thinking she's crazy. Cause she, they're like, oh, she's a delinquent. Like, why would she not want this great surgery done to her? Like, oh, to become part of society. And, um, eventually at the end of the episode, um, they force her into having the surgery. And, um, it's kind of like one of those, uh, really creepy bad endings Yeah, where like it, um, it sent, sends me chill into chills, you know, where it's like, I think she, the last shot of the episode is she looks in the mirror after she's had the surgery and her, she, her body's like a completely different, you know, like cardboard cutout. And she's like, Oh, I'm so happy. I feel fine. Like, you know, like it's like, um, they messed with her head kind of thing. Yeah. It, and, um, I, I, I bet that's where, uh, the director from that movie, uh, <clears throat> That Nicole Kidman movie, The Stepford Wives, comes from, I bet. I don't know if you ever saw that, but it kind of reminds me that, like, the whole neighborhood is, like, all the wives have had this, like, operation or something, and they all turn into, like, the picture-perfect wife, but it's all under, like, scientific uh, false pretenses and whatnot. It's pretty crazy. You. Yeah, it kind of sounds similar to that. Um, another great story that does that is, um, like, 1984, like, yeah. Uh, you know, it's a book everybody talks about, oh, today's like 1984 or whatever. But like, um, the whole story, it's like this guy trying to uncover like these, these nonsense lies everybody's believing. And by the end of the story, he ends up, um, taking back all his suspicion and like believes all the lies again. It's just kind of like one of those bad endings, you know, but, um, the reason we talked about that episode Besides it giving me chills was because uh, I felt like I could relate to that. Um, I feel like, you know, we live in this uh, people in general. It's not just like today's age. It's just like, you know, um, if you're not like me, then like you need to be like me type of thing. Like it's kind of like that hive mind. 
yes mentality i was just talking about and, that. you know i i feel like um <clears throat> you know everybody has like their click or like their group they they gravitate towards and like if you're not part of it like you know that sucks for you like you can't be a part of it or like if you could be a part of it if you if you start wearing these kind of clothes if you start talking like this you know it's just you know it's dumb sh- superficial yeah you know bullshit but like i felt like um you know it just i just felt like it it uh it really vibed with me and like um i felt like i had a lot of people in life that like i had to kind of be like you need to fuck off cuz <laughs> you know, I'm not like you, but I'm not going to be like you. I'm going to do my own thing. And I feel like that song was kind of like our way of saying like, fuck you guys. Yeah. Fuck you guys. We're going to blaze our own path with this. Right. Yeah. I, I, I respect that, man. That's some really deep thinking lyrical content right there. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for that insight, man. And, um, Vox, uh, Vox Popu- Populi. Uh, yeah. So I always say Vox Populi. Populi um, okay. it's Latin. Okay. So it means um, voice of the people. Um, And so that whole song was about, um, so we started the band in like. uh, 2016. Yeah, 2016. So like we, in 2015, I had quit um, my last band and um, the other guitar player quit along with me and we started intent and like I had, you know, we had already talked like we and him had known each other. And so, like, we started jamming and writing these songs. And so the the world at the time of 2016 was, like, really fucking weird. So, like, um, on the news, there was, like, a lot of, um, like, Black Lives Matter protests going on. And, you know, it's, it's still bullshit we're seeing today where it's, like, um, you know, a lot of police brutality. And, um, you know, we have all these news channels. And they're all saying a different thing. And um, there was like, um, like different things going around where like, um, this is like something I haven't fact checked, but like, I really, I really should have. Um, But like, there was like images online um, where it was like the same newspaper and they were going towards like different areas, like targeting towards different areas. So like in, um, and like say the poorer community, or like the more um, minority driven community, they would be put, it's the same newspaper, by the way. It's like, they would be having a different narrative, a different headline, but the same picture is the same story. And like, then they would go to the white, white or like rich communities. And then they'd be saying a different opposite narrative. Mm -hmm. And it would be like, like what the fuck's going on here? So like, um, I had frustrations with that. And like, you know, um, 2016 that was like you know the end of like the obama administration and like shit like that so like um i felt like you know when obama was put into office um i'm not a democrat or anything by the way but i feel like um when obama was put into office you know we saw a lot of dumb bullshit like you know oh he was born in the middle east um you know shit like that yeah there there was uh, a lot of information that was just kind of like is it factual? Can we find the, I mean, everything was kind of right, like, like in the air. But basically like my point of that is like, there was a, a bunch of pushback from people. And, you know, I saw some like crazy ass shit where like, there was like, you know, just straight racist people, you know, marching in the street and, you know, burning like a black dummy. Yeah. You know, shit like that, you know, like just messed up shit. And it's like, like what the fuck? And like, but basically like i'm i'm bringing all this up because um we have like these two different sides here and you know whether you're on one side or the other you're it was basically like my frustration with being you know um you're kind of told to hate the other guy and like no matter what like you can't see that like if you're reading, you know, this fucking sketchy ass newspaper and you're only reading it because you're wanting to feel better about yourself and like the side that you're on, but like you're hating on these guys, like, because I feel like sometimes in these political debates, it's like, oh, um, I'm only a Democrat because I believe in, you know, abortion and I want, um, you know, I want, uh, you know, better health care, you know, shit like that, like these fire you, what would you call that? Like a hot topic. Hot where topics, it's like, yeah. Yeah. Like, um, and then people will be a, a Republican because they want, um, 
you know, for Se- a while it was like they want to build the wall or um, Second Amendment rights, you know, things shit like that. Yeah. So, um, not to be too far off topic, I, I hate to talk so much when I just get asked a simple question. It's but, all good, man. Um, we got time. As long I got time, as long as you got time. <laughs> so basically, the song is about my frustrations with fucking that era and we're still living in it. I feel like it's gotten even worse. Yeah. Um, and, um, me being a fucking back then I was kind of a conspiracy theory guy, but like very level headedly, you know, Mm -hmm. I, I still think that there's, there might still be something going on. And like, um, so there's like a lot of lyrics in the song where, I say, yo, you know, like brother hate brother until you're dead or something like that. I don't remember. I, we haven't played that song in a long ass time. But um, but then there's like other lyrics where I'm saying like I'm talking about like the five mouth beast. Well, like um, at the time of writing those lyrics, th- like all five major media companies were owned by um, five different companies, which is like um, Walt Disney, um, oh, yeah. Time Warner, um I don't even remember all the rest. I think one of them was Fox. Um, but now Disney owns Fox. So now there's only four major media corporations controlling all information. That, that And that includes like all magazines, all print. Oh, yeah. um, the only thing that's like somewhat safe is like um, some like independent um, internet sources. You know, like um, I couldn't even name you like one right now because I don't fucking, you know, I don't I don't pay attention to that shit. Yeah, me neither. I, I you know, I, I just... It is what it is, you know. Like you said, I mean, you've got all these major uh, corporations that just it's a huge umbrella of of companies that are just controlling, you know, all the media, the internet, satellite communications, God knows what. So, exactly, and like, um, so like <clears throat> that. That's kind of like the whole the whole song is like, like, like my, the way I write songs is kind of like sometimes it's like telling a story. Yeah. And, like, um, I think this song was kind of asking the question, like, you know, if we all hate each other and we're all listening to this bullshit that's going to make us hate each other and we're all fighting against each other, like, what's going to come of this? Like, there's obviously a point to this if we're being put against each other. And, like, like what is that going to be? Like, what is going to be, like, the the bad ending of, you know, this era? And, like, we we kind of need to snap out of it and you know, embrace that there's going to be some difference between us and that's totally okay. And like, as long as like somebody isn't spewing something that's like totally nonsense or, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like something that's not going to hurt somebody, you know, like as long as, as we can have a difference of opinion, like we should be okay. We can agree to disagree shit like that, you know? Yeah, man. I think that's all, that's some very, uh, you know, noble things you're writing about, you know, and, overall positive message and sure. uh, and so i kind of skip around I'll, we'll probably come back to the song titles and whatnot but okay. yeah. but uh <clears throat> i apologize because I, I have a thought and i was just thinking about you know we talked about how y'all started playing music and everything like that and i'm really since it's named tales from the riff I, I like to hear the story of the individuals like yourselves of you know your, your musical journey you know um Y'all, y'all hit off with the big four playing rock band. I'm sure, like, with rock band, those fingers were getting, like, really, you know, uh, the dexterity levels were, like, just, you know, getting stretched out. And then from rock from rock band, y'all went straight into the instruments? Uh, well, for me, because um, he wasn't really um, – he wasn't really into the those games. Um, okay. It was, uh, you know, because – like the guitar here on rock band games were just games that like my family got for us. Cause it would, it would just be fun or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you know, I got good on like the fake guitar, right. But it's not even close to the fucking real thing. Oh, okay? I, know. It's not, I know. It's not even, it's not even fucking close. I know. So it's like trying a real one. It's like, dude, this isn't even close <laughs> that like, you know, there's no way. Right. But the drums at least were like the same mechanics, you know, you have a pair of sticks, you you have um your foot hits a hits a pedal mm-hmm. you know and you use your sticks to hit hit pads it's the same exact mechanics as um a real set of drums it's just you're hitting pads instead of you know actual cymbals or or you know an actual snare drum that's you know 
So it, it was the same mechanic. So, I mean, when I was able to play like all the songs on the game, you know, pretty, pretty good. I was able to go to a real drum kit and play all those songs for the first time on a real kit, yeah. you know, just right off the bat, you know, because, because it was the same exact mechanics. And it's like, I can, I can play drums apparently now. Yeah. Uh, so thanks to that that uh video game so so you um, you'd even need uh formal lesson training no um no i didn't have any formal lesson training this was just uh on my own um so yeah um so yeah and then i was just um at that point you know um it convinced my mom you know to get me an actual real drum kit for my birthday it was for my 14th birthday um so that's when I got, you know, and I still have that drum kit in the house. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, and then and then I just I play I played on that um, a lot. I would I'd play that as much as I could and just try to practice um, the songs I wanted to try to pl learn how to play. Um, you know, like the Metallica songs. You know, I you know those took forever to learn because those were a lot. Those are a lot harder than fucking ACDC songs. Oh yeah, uh, you know, you know. Um, you know, and then I could never do I could never do the intro or the ending of Painkiller, uh, <laughs> but I could do like everything in between, right? So like you know that the you know the part that matters, right? Exactly. Yeah. You, you ever tried yeah. your You ever tried your hand at uh at, at Sean Reinert's take on uh? Was oh God, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's that that's even harder. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So um. But yeah, it was just um, it was just learning the songs that I um that I liked and trying to learn how to actually play them. Um, taking forever and just uh, you know it took forever to finally get the beat down that you would he, you would hear you know the thrash beat you'd hear on like you know you know all the all the thrash bands would play you know like the skate like beat battery by Metallica yeah, yeah the, the skate, skate beat. beat yeah yeah I remember just practicing forever and. Um, going like, holy shit, they have to hit the hi hat and the ride symbol that fast the entire time. I'm like, damn, this is gonna take me a while, right? But I would just keep trying over and over and over again until um I think I was actually not on the kit when I actually finally like got the like pattern down. I think I was actually like in class at school and like because I was like I was like I think with like the pencil yeah. and shit. Oh yeah. I was like I was like, holy shit, you know, and like my foot I was like I, I like I like got the fucking pattern down at school, you know, where, you know, I wasn't like, oh shit, dropping it or like, oh shit, I had to stop because I was like, or, or, you know, um, but it was consistent sounding right. Yeah. And then I was able to go home and I was able to finally play that beat, you were, know. Were the teachers so, like constantly telling you, hey, Garrett, can you like stop it? What's going on, man? Did they immediately test you for ADD and just pull you out of uh, class? I, I don't I don't remember because like usually like I, I wasn't like banging hard or nothing. It was okay. like it was like sometimes I wasn't I was just using my fingers or whatever mm -hmm. on like a desk. Um, and you know, um, so I wasn't like it wasn't like being super obnoxious with it or whether or whatever. But I just remember I was like I was like trying to like do it like with my hands like tapping wise yeah. like just kind of like this you know. And then like, I, I finally did it and I was like, oh shit, you know, I can like, I can like, I can like do that. Right. Right. And I was able to go home and do it on my actual kit. Oh. It felt good. I was like, oh shit, I can now pop, finally play these songs that I, you know. What, that I what was the most challenging song for you to play drums like, uh, like, like cover wise, you know, besides the original material uh, in those days? Uh, the, well. Uh, the hardest songs to learn for me at the time um, was definitely um, it was definitely trying to do like um, like Raining Blood um, by Slayer, but also um, uh, the Metallica songs. Um, I remember it, it. It took me a while to learn, not necessarily because um, the the like the beats were hard, but sometimes like Lars's fills were just like weird like compared to the other drummers um but they were awesome sounding yeah. right like i remember um i think i i love this one phil he does on um on welcome home sanitarium mm -hmm. uh, it's like it's like in the it's like in the like i don't know if it's called the bridge part or whatever it's in the latter half or whatever but he just does does this fill where he like hits like the snare and the toms and the bass drums like super quick or whatever 
It's like it's like or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the fuck is that, right? But but it sounded so cool, right? Yeah. There, um, there's that much kind of like how his fills, um, his fills were. They were just like, they were like weird, but they just they just fucking worked and sounded like it like gave like the songs like a a kind of a new drive or, or whatever. So I remember it took a while to learn like um like how he did he did some of his fills like that um. Uh, but then definitely the uh, Sepultura songs were definitely just because of how fast they were constantly all the time, and they were way faster than you know even the Slayer songs. Yeah, you know, um, the Sepultura songs definitely were uh were like oh shit, you know, like got to do that beat even faster and constantly, you know, nonstop, and do you know that fill, you know, um, so th those um. The songs like that were definitely the hardest. Um, the Megadeth songs, you know, uh, the Gar, the Gar Samuelson fills that he does, you know, mm -hmm. uh, those were definitely um, just because of how tight they were. Um, definitely, uh, definitely difficult. But I mean, I loved, um, you know, trying to play it um, and learn it and such. So yeah, I mean, those were those were really the bands that I, um, you know. You know, derived, like how I play from, you know, it was Megadeth, uh, Slayer, Metallica, and Sepultura. Those were the, Did the Garrett, those were the four bands for me. You uh, know? Garrett, um, I was just curious though, as a as a drummer, did you like um, kind of gravitate anything like German thrash uh, wise, or like like create bands like Creator and Sodom and whatnot? So, so like those bands, um, I remember, um, I think it was a creator album i think it was extreme aggression yeah um uh, and pleasure to kill mm -hmm. I, I think uh those two i remember like hearing for the first time and being like and being like um like yeah this is this is like uh I, I remember just being like wow this is even more uh <laughs> uh uh i was trying to i was trying to think how i just like i'm trying to remember the feeling i had when i was listening i think it was pleasure to kill for sure um I was just kind of like, wow, this is even more like a, a sloppy but darker version of Slayer. Yes. You know, that's, I was like, you know, I was like, this is like a, a sloppy, darker, more, uh, uh, you know, the recording sound too, lo-fi sounding, oh, you know, sl you know, Slayer. But I was like, you know, I remember, um, I remember those bands. I was like, I was like, okay, you know, um. You know, especially with like the drumming and such. But I mean, you know, I always felt like even with like a lot of those like those other bands, like um, you know, like Overkill and um, you know, whenever I felt like you know listening to them, I was just like, I, I always was just like, no, nah, I I, I want to put Staple Tour back on. I want to put you know, uh, Metallica back on because I felt like um, I felt like Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, and Staple Tour, they like um. Yeah, what's Go up, Layton? Yeah. <laughs> I got a visitor. No, I, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I felt um, because like whenever I whenever I felt like um, like listening to those like other like more underground bands like like Creator or Sodom or um or or you know Overkill um or Dark Angel or whatever um all those bands I just felt like you know. I felt like I just wanted to always go back to just listening to Metallica and Sepultura and Slayer and Megadeth because I was just like, well, the songs like, the 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 songs just sound more like creative from yeah. those guys, but also but also they sound tighter, yeah. they, even the playing wise. Because like you know people bash Lars and such, um, but on the records you know he he played it tight, whereas you know I would listen to I would listen to some of those older like Creator records and I'm like. Is the drummer drunk? Like this? Uh, this is. Like, <laughs> I bet he was. You know, he probably, probably, maybe. I but mean, like, they, they again, drink. Like, I listen to those bands, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, or like the drum fills, like, um, like because like Lars's fills, I always felt were not predictable. Like they were like you would listen to it and be like, oh, and then you like associate it with them. Whereas the I felt like the drumming with those other bands was just kind of like it felt like the standard like fills you'd hear like if if you were first playing but just sped up yeah and i was just kind of like and they would do it like every four bars or something <laughs> and i was just kind of like i was just kind of like okay well like like they were they were doing like i felt like a lot of those underground 
bands, they were just doing a fill just to do a fill, not because they actually like um, drove the riff better mm-hmm. or the song better or helped spice it up. It was just kind of like, oh, we don't want it to be like boring because it's the same riff over and over again. So I guess, you know, just add a fill. But so like, that's why like I always like listening to Metallica and Slayer, Slayer Megadeth and Sepultura because I felt like with the drum fills, they actually felt like they were integral to um, like that the fills themselves actually sounded creative, but also like with a purpose, like way, when they were placed and how they were played. So it was like whenever I wanted to listen to those more underground bands, I was just kind of like, well, uh, you know, I, I'm just going to go back to, you know, these four bands because I felt like they did it the best. You know, yeah, a, lot of people, so, a lot of people feel that way. And uh, I'm always curious to, to hear another uh, drummer's take on the German thrash guys. And you, and yeah. you said it. I mean, like, a lot of people say you know, the same thing I, I you think, said. I think Sodom, I think Sodom, I think was probably the best, I think, out of all of them. I, I creator creator with the older records. Yeah. Um uh I think they were also, you know, just cuz of how dark and heavy they were. Right. But those were like the only two that I um that I, you know, was was just kind of like, "Oh, okay," you know. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, that that that's kind of my my take on it. Um you know, it was really me listening to, you know, I also listened to uh, Iron Maiden. Like they weren't they weren't um they weren't like heavy thrash obviously. But I just liked how um how like epic sounding the songs were um and especially like how the drumming was because the drumming that um you know all the drummers they've had yeah. you know um you know each one you know the drumming was just awesome you know like there was no double basing sure. but like what they were doing with their hands you know was was uh was just really good Nico McBrain on the on the drums um you know I would listen to uh. The, the Power Slave yep. record, and uh, uh, somewhere in time, and um, yeah, Number of the Beast, um, and that's n- that's not Nico, but I, those um, but those three records, I remember just just for the drumming, just how good like the fills were, mm-hmm. um, and and that again, it goes to like the fills actually sounded like they were um with purpose and actually like um like thought well thought out yeah and like actually like dro- drives like the song and the riffs and that's um you know and that's that's just what i like uh listening to i like listening to like the drum ri- like drum rolls where like you know exactly where you're at in the song because like that happens there mm-hmm. and for that reason you know oh they had one um, hell of a producer uh you know manning the controls too i'm i'm sure yeah you know to tell them yeah. where to go where to put it and all that good stuff but definitely some kick-ass musicians nonetheless i mean that's why they're iron maiden <laughs> yeah but um so speaking of drum fills <laughs> I, I mean tommy lee how you like those drum fills <laughs> Tommy Lee from Molly Crew. Um, was he? <laughs> Damn, I don't. I just think of Livewire when it's just like, pop, and that's it. Pop, pop, and then it's done. <laughs> I mean, the thing of like, um, I like, like simple fills, but actually, but um, actually help drive the song are, are cool. Mm-hmm. But I just, um, you know. I, I think when it comes to fills, I just care that it um it doesn't um overstep the riffs yeah. if that makes sense. Because there's sense. some like like what I was saying before about the drummer doing doing a fill every two bars or every four bars all the time, where it's just kind of like what am I supposed to be listening to, right? Yeah. Or it's like you know I basically like the way I try to play drums is I try to like. Because I feel like this is guitar music, right? Yes. Metal, metal, metal is guitar music, so the drums need to dance the guitar, not overshadow, you know, or or take step all over, you know, the riff. So so you're just kind of like, what? Wait, what's going on? You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, that's how I always um thought about you know how the drums should be is like, um should in a, in a lot of ways kind of mimic in a way what the rhythm guitars are doing especially or sometimes like if the leads are doing something you can even like do something with that mm-hmm. or like sometimes even like with the vocals um it just kind of depends right um but that's how like you know i never um 
thought of like Phil's as like, oh, this is where I'm gonna like flash off how fast I can play or my chops or whatever, right? Because you know, I always felt like what what's the best sounding fill that would work here? You know what I mean? Definitely. Or you know, if I if I played that, would that make this this part you know or this transition? sound like awesome right you know what i mean so so that's how you know i i play to the song right mm -hmm. um and that's what I, that's how i uh that's how i try playing is uh actually making the song drive better enhance better uh and the fills you know uh make the part you know sound more lively but not like stepping over it like it actually sounds like it was you know built like with the rhythm guitar, you know what I mean? Yeah. So whenever that, that I have to constitute to my next question, whenever it comes to, you know, uh, riding together, are y'all always together or it's like, y'all just, Jeremy will have a riff or you will have a, so, have a beat. Yeah. Jeremy writes, uh, Jeremy pretty much is like the songwriter. Okay. Um, and then like, he'll like, like what it used to, what, what it was a lot of the times, like, especially like in the early days, like, um, like 2016, like when we first started and such, you know, he would come up with like the or songs or like or like the riffs, and then he'd come over and we'd like practice them and play them, and then um, and it was just kind of like okay, maybe we could like, like maybe I I'd have like a suggestion for like maybe we could we could do that here, or something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, but it was mostly um, it was mostly Jeremy coming up with the songs um. And he would come up with the guitar riffs for the songs. Um, and the song would pretty much like have like the idea fleshed out. It was just then practicing it together with the, you know, with my drums. Um, and then also making like maybe like a little adjustment like, oh, maybe what if we did it like this long instead of just this long, you know? Yeah. Or something. Or maybe added this here to there or whatever. Um, so it was just kind of like, Jeremy would build like the whole like entire foundation of the song and then like I'd help like finish it basically, you know. Yeah. So So Jeremy, uh, how long how long have you been playing guitar? Um shit, probably like eleven years now or ten years now, something like that. Yeah. Because yeah, you got you got the guitar with like when you were because we were both we both like after grade school, we went to completely different junior highs. Yeah. And we didn't really like we hung out sometimes, but not all that often as a result. But you just coincidentally picked up guitar, and I, I picked up drums. I, I got the drums for my 14th birthday, so you had to have gotten it, like... Yeah, I think I was 14. That sounds about right. Yeah. Because it was, like, ninth grade. Yeah. That's when I was, like, first yeah. starting out. Yeah. You, you yeah. got any uh, lessons, or you just did everything on your own? Um. So, it was, like, lessons at first. Like, it was... um. My school offered kind of like as a program, just kind of like a hobby or like an extra class, something to do. Um, and this guy would come in and he would teach us all, you know, and it wasn't anything really. It was just, you know, basic chords and um, some songwriting, um, practicing, um, you know, just very simple stuff, um, stuff like that. In fact, that actually wasn't the first time I attempted to learn guitar. Um, when I was a child, um, my school at the time, my elementary school before I moved, was starting to do the same thing. And I actually started learning then. But, you know, I was only around for like a little bit before I moved. So I only learned about like three chords or something like that. Yeah. But um, when it came around again, like it was like, oh, yeah, this is the real shit this time. Like we're going to learn... <laughs> all these chords, the whole alphabet, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it wasn't really anything too special. It was just like, you know, just basic musician, musicianship skills. Mm -hmm. um, really just the chords because um, it was all acoustic guitar and acoustic guitar is very um, percussive because, you know, these very bright, um, thick strings and, um, your, your left hand's getting a workout too, because the strings are th that thick and like the, the right, the right hand is all about the timing. So, um, that's why, you, you know, you go to these parties or these little stupid drum circles. There's always the guy with the guitar because, you know, that's really all you need. Um, because it's, score chicks, 
it's the percussion section and it's the fucking rhythm. So you don't really need much else unless somebody's going to be singing. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, it was that. And then, um, that was around the time right around then was when, uh, I didn't own an electric guitar. So, um, when I started hanging out with him and when we started jamming out again, um, it was like he, cause I think your mom bought you a guitar first, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that, uh, that sucked. Yeah. So it didn't work, <laughs> didn't work out for him, but no. it worked out for me. So like, I, I think I bummed his electric guitar. Yeah. Um, my, pa- my family was very poor at the time, um, because the, the recession had just hit. Yeah. And this is this was around 2009 or 10. Mm-hmm. So um, they couldn't afford to get me an electric guitar. And when I had when they had bought me the acoustic, it was like some pile of shit. Like um, it's a it's a Fender, and you'd think that'd be nice, but like no, it's not. It's like a fucking bottom of the barrel like Fender. Like I wouldn't wish that shit on my worst enemy. <laughs> it I still have it. It just sits there in the corner of the room collecting <coughs> dust. Um, but yeah, so I bummed his fucking. Uh, Fender Stratocaster or whatever, yeah. um, and he, it had like a little fucking front man too, and so I bought I brought that shit home, and so that's where I would practice the the electric on my own, and the the only reason I was bumming that shit was because we had like the cover band going on, and um, funny story because I mean I don't know if you've ever seen like a Fender front man, but it's basically only like like this big. Like oh, yeah. it's, it's like a foot by a foot, like fucking, <laughs> it's like a, like a 15 watt amp or something like yeah. that. Like, like little ass speaker. Right. Mm-hmm. I remember, um, that stupid cover band we were in. Um, we, we only had like two or three concerts and like the third one was canceled. Well, I, I showed up to like the second one, which was like at our school because um, there was another band, another covers band, the good one that was um, had all the popular kids in it. So like we we were all buddies, and so they were like, "Well, let's throw a concert here at the school. Like we'll talk to the administration, this that. Like we could throw a concert here in the parking lot." And so it was like, "Fuck yeah, like cool." And like they they made a fucking banner for us, which was cool. And um, Somebody, I think it was the singer's dad, made us like these really dumb looking t-shirts. I still have one somewhere. Yeah. They look so dumb. Like somebody went on their computer and like like MS Paint, like fucking typed in text and then like made an iron on. It looks super dumb. But like <laughs> uh I remember I showed up to the concert because it was like our time to play. And um I remember like one of the guys like setting up was like laughing. He's like, what are you going to do with that amp? I was like, I don't know. Like, I'm here to play. And, but, but I, I was just like some shy little kid back then. Like, I didn't know what to say to that. So, um, I remember I ended up bum- bumming off the, the other guitar player from the other band. I, I just used his rig, which was like a little bit bigger. It, it was, I'm just, I could still laugh at that amp because it was still pretty small, but it was bigger than my one by one foot amp. So it's like, which I still use, by the way, I use that amp to this day and it's awesome. I love it. But, um, yeah, that was, um, that was most of my fucking upbringing into, um, rock music. And I mean, back then I couldn't even play a guitar solo or anything like, um, that, that concert, that same one, there was a Linkin Park song, um, and probably their best song to this day, I, I would have to say, um, because they did it for the Transformers movie. Um, what was it called? The Great Divide? Uh, it's, it's something like, I think so. Yeah, See, if you um, don't know it offhand, it couldn't be the best song. <laughs> it, um, it's totally The Great Divide. But, um, uh, there I'm is just giving song. you shit. Um, okay, so if, you, if you've never listened to Linkin Park, they're a pretty all right band, like Ch- uh, Chester Bennington's vocals. This is for the audience, really, not for you. Um, but I've always thought that the guitar playing was some trash in that band because it's, um, it's just dan 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 like it's it, dan 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 And it's like, if you listen to like a punk rock band or, uh, anyone else that's going to be doing some dumb power chord shit like that, um, there's always like a little bit more to it than that. Not just straight downstroke dan 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 So like, um, 
So naturally, when he comes time for that guy to do a guitar solo, it's going to be some some nonsense too. Yeah. So, um, but I being um, a 15 year old or 14 year old playing through a one by one amp, um, learning this guitar solo was hard as fuck, <laughs> and um, I think the guitar solo was just um, like da na 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 na. It was just something dumb, like you know, and like, but that shit was hard for me. Yeah. And um. So that was probably one of the first guitar solos I ever learned. Although I wouldn't um, say it's a real guitar solo because it's from the guy from Lincoln Park. Yeah. Um, but then, um, uh, let's see. So then, um, it took me a really long time before I started to learn metal. By the way, really, it's like um, there was that shit, and then um, then the band broke up, and then um, I think learning shit on my own. It was really just kind of for fun, um, you know, more shit like more Green Day songs or whatever, and or um, trying to come up with my own shit. I couldn't really do that yet. I, I didn't feel like I knew enough, um, but it was like eventually I. Uh, okay, so growing up, the the one iPod I had in fucking, um, like elementary school. Uh, I used to re- listen to like a lot of random shit. So yeah, I had doesn't? like disco and like uh, 70s prog rock and, you know, just r- whack ass shit. Like when the kids would ask what I'm listening to, I'd be like James Brown <laughs> and they'd be like, who's that? You know, shit like that. Yeah. You know, so anyways, uh, one of the 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 first gu- other first guitar solo, I would have to say that's a real solo that I learned was um, Mr. Blue Sky by um, the Electric Light Orchestra. Mm-hmm. And it's just like midway through the song, and it's just like, it's just like really quick, and it's and it was like when I got that shit down, I was like, fuck yeah, like I have it, like, um, and then eventually, like I learned shit, like um, it took me a really long time, but I learned like Crazy Train. That was probably like, the first metal song I learned. A lot of people's, uh, like, um, yeah, Rite of Passage playing guitars, Crazy Train. <laughs> Yeah, so like I was like the guitar center hero after that. Like when I, because I, I mean the rhythm was the rhythm was pretty hard to learn too. Because that dude was using um, a lot of chords you don't see in metal, um, and even rock really. Because uh, Randy was like a classically trained um, musician, yeah. and you know when you bring knowledge, you know that cross camp contamination from like another genre. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's like alien. Yeah. So like, it wasn't like just power chords anymore. It was, uh, you know, uh, just crazy. And then like, uh, I think the solo took me a really long time. Um, there's one part specifically, um, where it's just like some dumb little pentatonic run. It's just, uh, you know, the basic pentatonic shape just, and I think it's just like, um and he just goes down to the you know the f sharp where it resolves and like that shit took me forever i was sitting in my room for hours after hours every night trying to get that dumb little part (laughs) down because i couldn't do it um and then one night it fucking just happened and like and then i just kept doing it for forever after that just to make sure i could still do it absolutely um but yeah that was like basically that was basically it up to when I started learning metal. Like I really couldn't do Metallica shit yet. Like that, that shit was even harder. And that probably took me like another good couple years to, to like felt confident to like get that fucking chugging down and shit like that. But then I know here I am still doing it to this day. So, yeah. So like whenever you were learning those songs at that age, or were you doing everything by, via tab or by ear? Oh, it was, it was usually by tab or okay. like, um, there's some fucking heroes on YouTube um, oh, that'll yeah. like show you know like beginners how to play songs like that and like a big one is like Marty Shorts. Yeah, that dude is like still around, I think. And I saw like a meme of him the other day, and I was like, <laughs> this is the fucking hero. Yeah, <laughs> where that like taught like half the nation how to play guitar and like, um, and I mean Marty Shorts, wherever you are in this world, God bless you. Like you're a <laughs> fucking saint. Like I love you. The like you taught me how to saint. play the Crazy Train solo. And, like, who the fuck does that? Like, you took time out of your day to teach, like, half of America, like, Crazy Train and, like, every other ACDC song. So, thanks. Yeah, I, I you know, I used him as well, man. I was learning how to uh, do the hammer-on and pull-offs for, uh, which Iron Maiden song was it? Oh, um, 
uh, I think it was Number of the Beast. Oh, okay, got yeah. you. Yeah, I was like, because I, like, I, I just started playing at the rightful age of 38 years old, playing guitar. Oh. And uh, I was, and how it goes is like, I was in the, you know, I, I tell every episode now, people are probably getting bored with the story, but yeah, I was on a job living in a hotel for weeks on end, had nothing to do, and I was on YouTube. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to learn how to play guitar at 38 years old. And here I am three um, years later still doing it. I want to be a musician. Awesome. <laughs> it's never really too late. I mean, like, um, I'm trying to think. There is there is like famous musicians that then start till, you know, they were 35 or 40. Or, yeah. um, and, you know, it happens like uh, the – I mean, okay, look at like Samuel L. Jackson. That dude didn't have his like big break till he was like, like forty five, I think. True story. And yeah. I, that was when he got into. Um, I think it was like. I, I don't want to get like criticized by. I think it was. I think it was. Was it Jurassic Park? Was his first big break? No, uh, he 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 had that uh one part where he played a uh. He, he held up a McDonald's and coming to America. And then like from, oh, and, and okay, like okay. and like from there, he just launched onto bigger things like, like the Jurassic Park and uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, right on. Okay, yeah, but he's like a famous example. Um, and I know there's more. I just you know they're not always up on the top of my head. Right, right. But um, so the first band y'all y'all alluded to y'all was a cover band. What kind of covers y'all were uh y'all are playing for the the people out there in Arizona? Okay, so I know it was Lincoln Park. Um, <laughs> there was um, there was this pop punk band at the time called uh, what the fuck was it? I think it was called Hey Monday, yeah. and uh, we, we did one of their songs. Um, uh, shit, what's what else? I think did we do a Paramore song? I couldn't remember. I think, uh, we might. I think so. Yeah. But uh, this band had a female singer, so like we we had to we had to gravitate towards um, shit like that, like. Um, I really catered to like that style. Um, but yeah, like, you know, just silly stuff like that. Cool, man. So, uh, let's, let's talk about the, the beginning of, of, uh, intent 2016. I see that, uh, y'all had Ricardo Hall and eventually yeah. recruited Jimmy Nelson, Alex Zucker. And, uh, I actually got in touch with, uh, Pat, Initially, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. initially, and he was like, "Hey, man, I'm the new guy." <laughs> so Jeremy handles all the social media. You need contact with him. So tell me about the. Uh, I guess it was kind of a. Um, I wouldn't say a revolving door, but back, you know. Oh, it's totally a revolving door. Like, <laughs> don't don't even fucking like joke. Like, um, uh, it's totally a revolving door. Um, so uh, yeah, so Ricardo was the um, the other guitar player in that band I was in before. And like I said, like me and him had quit and like all three of us were like the co-founding members, mm -hmm. I would say. And so um, before we could even do like our first show, um, he had to like move away and like he he moves back um, to California. He's from California, too. And like he went to be, um, go with, um, be closer to his family, stuff like that. He's got like um, he's got kids. So he he's he needs to try to like take care of them. And yeah. like he he knew his where his priorities were. And, um, uh, so I, like right after the, when he left, like, um, uh, there was Jimmy and I found him from like a Craigslist ad and, um, like he joined for a while. Um, and then like he quit, it was a big fucking mess. And then, uh, let's see. So Alex, Alex was like our first real bass player in the band. Um, and like he, um, He's like kind of like way younger than us, so like he um so when I found him, I was like twenty one or twenty two at the time, and he was like seventeen. Yeah. So like there was like that gap. Um, but um yeah, he was always kind of like the baby in the band, and like so he um he had just left recently, and then we had um so we yeah we got Pat, and then um Jimmy had left in like twenty eighteen, so that's when I found like Lathan and was um teaching him all the songs and shit like that. Uh, so that's basically like history. Uh. The the chemistry between, I mean, obviously you guys, y'all have been knowing each other for a long time since y'all was in junior high. 
whenever Pat came in, was it like an immediate connection when y'all when y'all met him? Music, you know, musically speaking, like you know, it was able to uh, get you know trade ideas and riffs or whatever. Or were these songs already written before he came into the fold? Yeah. So, um, uh, so we met Patrick. Um, this was like before I was looking for a bass player or anything. Like, um, we were on tour uh, with DRI in 2019 so like right before the pandemic um we played bakersfield and at the time patrick had a band called um bomb scare um and they had been around for a couple years but like people in bakersfield really knew them and so like that's you know that's his hometown so like um he like came and hang out he was like kind of like a pal like like hey do you guys need a place to stay tonight like shit like that and um you know just like a buddy and um, so, you know, the tour went on and then when we got back home and like the pandemic started, um, we kind of stayed in touch and, um, like when, when shit hit the fan with Alex, um, I was like, Hey, I'm going to need a bass player. Would you be interested? And, uh, his band at the time was going to be breaking up or like in its final stages. So he was like, yo, fuck yeah. Like, let's do this. And so um to answer that other question like a lot of the songs for this new album that uh is going to be coming out very soon like um these songs were kind of already written like we were just finishing up like the that whole batch of songs so like he was just kind of popping in but um lately like me and him have been sharing a lot of riffs and trying to get like um a foundation going for like uh the new record and you know whatever's going to come in the future and you know, he's a, he's a thrash guy, you know, I'm a thrash guy. Um, you know, me and him both kind of have like kind of weird music tastes, but like we kind of vibe that way. Yeah. And so I feel like, um, you know, him being like another, um, like another front man or another main writer in another band. Um, and he kind of knows how, how it needs to work and is very professional. Like, I feel like we vibe very well in that way. So there, there hasn't been any problems or anything. That's good. I mean, uh, how has the uh, response been, like, you know, live-wise, uh, whenever y'all open up for bands such as DRI? Oh, very good. Very, very good. Yeah. Like, um, I I have, uh, I've heard a lot of crazy shit get told to me off stage when I get off, like, they're like, oh, hell yeah, brother, like, I saw Slayer <laughs> back in 1984, and like, yeah. uh, you're, you're just like, damn, brother, and like, shit like that, you know, like. <laughs> Um, I've heard we're, we're Slayer. I've heard like, we're, you know, I had one guy come up to us in Florida and was like, Hey, I thought you guys were, were doing Metallica covers until I realized, uh, you're your own thing. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. like but I mean, like to get com compared to some shit like that is crazy. Cause I mean, I don't, I don't feel like we're, you know, they're, those guys are like God tier bands. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. nothing's ever, they're untouchable. But, like, when somebody says, like, hey, you remind me of them and, like, you guys have something really fucking good going on, it's, like, crazy. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree, man. Y'all have something really special going on. Um, and, like, now that I know more about the band and the influences y'all, the music, it it sounds every bit. Like, as there's y'all took pieces of, like, Exodus, Metallica, Sepultura, and just made this nice little convenient little sandwich of that. And it's a tasty sandwich, and I'm all about right. it. It checks all my boxes for sure. For sure. Okay. Uh, so what's life living like in, in, in Mesa? Uh, it's crazy. I mean, it, it depends on what uh, area of Mesa you live in. Uh, well, y'all area. It's, okay. Um, well, the area I live in right now, it's like a little bit nicer. But if you start going more towards like um like more towards like the downtown area or like where the the main central area of mesa is it can get kind of rough like you'll start seeing like uh like a lot of meth and uh Ooh. like homeless people you know shit like that but it's not really that bad i wouldn't say it's that bad like if somebody wanted to come to mesa i'd be like yo come on down like it's a great <laughs> fucking time like it's not like you're gonna get robbed at gunpoint 
or nothing. It's just a grand old time, you know? I only ask because uh, I, I like the descriptions. Like, you know, we're a metal band from the wasteland of Mesa, Arizona. And I had a yeah, I, I came up with that. I had a, I had a good friend who was on a uh, – he had worked on a job uh, around Mesa. And I think there was – he did a good bit of, like, uh, hiking trails and whatnot at the, somewhere around there. And he, he loved it. He, he, he wanted to stay, in fact. Yeah, Arizona, like uh... – it's there's it's like a hiker state or like um uh if you have like dirt bikes there it's pl- it's perfect for shit like that or um uh there's a couple lakes like people go boating it's it's strange but like there is like a kind of like you could go to the beach kind of at the lake or whatever if you wanted to like go hang out in the sun or whatever yeah so how how's the metal community over there is it just y'all no it's it's bigger than that like um I almost couldn't even tell you what it's like anymore because, um, like the pandemic hit and like it, like, like so many venues closed over here. Um, there's really only like a few left, I would say like, like reputable ones, Mm -hmm. um, other than like people just, you know, doing a house show or a backyard show. Um, but there's, there's a lot of bands for sure. And like, there's even more bands that came out during the pandemic that I haven't seen. Um, you know, a lot of like kids or, um, you know, if a, a other bands break up and then they like form other mem, you know, from other members of other bands, you know, yeah. so it's like it it's changed a lot in just like two years. Like I couldn't even tell you what it's like anymore. So are are y'all are y'all signed to uh, a label at the moment? Uh, no, we're uh, completely independent. Completely independent, and, so, and y'all just doing like doing all the uh, show bookings yourselves and whatnot. Yep. Man, well, look, I gotta you know, I gotta come through my hometown of Lafayette, Louisiana. Oh, for sure. Like, really. I mean, if y'all, in between uh, New Orleans and, and Houston runs, just stop it in Lafayette. And, man, like, cause we're all about it. We all we love our metal down here. It's just, it's a small little college town. I don't know if you know the band Goat Whore from New Orleans. Yep. Well, they, they, uh, they play Lafayette a bunch. They love playing Lafayette. I mean, we, uh, I hate God. I mean, all the, all the New Orleans uh, favorites, you know, always make a run in Lafayette, which is really cool of them. So, man, I think y'all would do great over here for sure. I, I'm always like, you know, it's, it's great for me as a fan because uh, this is what it's all about, like reaching out to bands like yourselves, you know, to either uh, – find out more about what makes y'all tick and, you know, and y'all beginnings and whatnot and, you know, and help broaden whatever reach y'all can't, whatever reach, like I said. Uh, so I appreciate y'all coming on, man. But now I got some questions, some, uh, some hard hitting questions though. Okay. And, and since right. and we're going to exclude the big four from, okay. from, from, from this. Uh, okay. Perfect. So I need to know, well, actually, nah, you can include the big four. Uh, what are your go-to six albums, Houses on Fire, and... Oh, I'm grabbing those albums? You gra- and you grab them, yeah. Okay. You, you better start us off. Okay, go ahead, yeah, Garrett. Right. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess the obvious ones, like I, like I already said, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm grabbing that Ride the Lightning album and uh-huh. Master of Puppets album, like, real quick. Uh... But then I'm also grabbing the, uh, um, I'm grabbing a Peace Cells by Megadeth, um, real quick, and then I'm grabbing, uh, I'm grabbing Beneath the Remains and Arise by Sepultura real quick. So those are five. So, uh, I guess the the last one I would get would probably be, um, it would probably if I was choose the sixth one um let's see i probably choose uh star wars motion soundtrack i'm trying to think because because i mean i remember i liked listening to um killing is my business a lot too so that that's the um, i'm trying i'm trying to think of one that i would choose before that um it's hard you know and that's um i, I think those are like the, yeah, I mean, those, I think those are the six right there, um, you know, that I'm, I'm grabbing real quick, you know. Hell yeah. Those, those are what I listen to a lot. Um, and that's how I like the drumming wise. That's what I, you know. Freaking yeah, I love it, man. Just just straight up all the thrash. 
Yeah. Right. How about you, Jeremy? Uh, you top okay, six. So, uh, do they have to be metal albums? No, it, like no, anything? it's 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 whatever's sacred to you. You gotta get out okay. the fucking house. Um. Shit, I'm I'm like trying to think of some that are like aren't big four because like I, those are all easy. Like they yeah. probably take up most of the fucking yeah. spots. But um, I, I know those are my you know fuck. shit. Like um, hold on, let me look through my phone really quick. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Um, all right, for one, one for sure is going to be P cells. Like I fucking love that album. Um, fun fact about me, I I used to hate Megadeth. I um I was always like the Metallica guy. Yeah, and then like um. I don't know, like, I always liked, um, like, James's voice, like, that's, he, he's, he's got, like, a great voice, but, like, um, and then you listen to, like, Dave Mustaine, and I didn't like his voice, like, I was like, yo, he sounds like a fucking nose is on the microphone, <laughs> like, 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 I don't know, he just sounds, like, like, really nasally, and, yes. like, and, like, weird, and, like, um, but then, like, I don't know, like, years later, like, I, it just, like, hit me, I'm like, this is fucking cool, like um but yeah for sure that album or um i like their third one too um uh so far so good so what yeah uh i jammed that one a fucking lot too um uh for for sure there's another band i really like evile i don't know if you've ever heard of them um great fucking thrash metal band from england um and they're like a newer band well, newer band. They're like, they've been around for like twenty years now, but like um their uh their album Five Serpents Teeth for sure would probably be in there. Okay. Um uh Forbidden, you ever heard of Forbidden? Yes, I have. Okay, so we'll put Forbidden Evil in there. Uh so that's three albums. Um You ever heard of the band Iron Reagan? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I love that album, uh, Tyranny of Will. So okay. we'll put that in there. Um, I'll put the painkiller album cause that's fucking going there for sure. That's, uh, that's insured by that's, me. That's my boy. <laughs> um, let me see. Well, I got like one more. Um, uh, okay. So like, I'm not, I, I'd say I'm probably getting out of my death metal phase, Okay. but like, and like, I'm strictly like the thrash metal guy again, but yeah. like, I love, um, consuming impulse by pestilence, dude, like, I love that album, um, so that's probably gonna have to be my final pick. That's awesome, dude. Yes, I am totally in agreement with with that. So, what was the wildest shit y'all seen uh, uh, on stage? On stage, yeah. Um, Just like either sharing the stage with someone, like you know, you're either opening for someone or someone's opening for you. What was the wildest shit you saw? Uh, the, I got a couple. Do you have any? Uh. Uh, no, you you go right ahead. Okay. Um. So, uh, this isn't like that weird, but I thought it was fucking whack. <laughs> um. But uh, so when we were on um the last DRI tour back in 2019, um, so we played um, I think it was this town called Ramona, and it's right outside of um San Diego, and it's like this uh it's up in the mountains it's very remote like but um i know where you at i was actually stationed in the uh, marine corps at camp pendleton so i know exactly where ramona is at okay okay um so i don't know if you've ever been there but it's very much like a very small town like there's um basically like just a couple streets with all the houses and then there's a couple streets with like the downtown area yes and um for some reason they have this fucking busting ass theater there and it's like awesome, like 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 some five star ass shit. Like you walk in, it's like like an amphitheater almost, like like where you would go to see like a production or shit like that. But basically, we we're we we're supposed to play there, and so we roll up, and um, there was this other band there. So we sh- we showed up a little late because we had to drive in from Vegas, mm-hmm. and um, we had hit a lot of traffic in the LA area, you know, of course. And um, we show up and. Um, there was this other band there and they were already doing their sound check, uh, even though they were supposed to um, do theirs after us. Um, and it was all older guys and it was like this three piece metal band. And, um, you know, they were really cool at first. All right. And um, the drummer, uh, you know, he, he's got this cool ass fucking rack set up and, 
Um, you know, they're all playing their cool ass, like fresh out of the box, like Marshall amps and, you know, shit like that. Like they were fucking ready to rock that <laughs> night. And I guess, um, they're not, they were like, weren't even from the area, like something like they were from like San Francisco, I think he said. Mm -hmm. And like, I guess, th um, they like called in a favor, um, on like the promoter, one of the other bands, like, Hey, get me on the show, even though it's like nowhere fucking near me. And so then they like flew all their shit out and then played the show. But anyways, um, they're really cool. They're really cool guys. Um, and then we did our sound check and, you know, they were all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, awesome. You guys do great. Like, you sound great. And like, shit like that. And like, um, so now they're setting up their shit on the stage. And so, um, when you're on tour, if you've never been on tour before, it is very tiring um, you, uh, don't get much sleep. Um, if you leave the venue at like two or 3 AM, um, sometimes you have to do a little bit of driving after that. Yeah. And sometimes you only get like two to two to six sleep. If that, um, uh, if, if shit's really going busy. Um, so we're fucking tired. So we're fucking like, um, there was three of us. Somebody went to go like get food or something. So we're all sitting in the back of the amp amphitheater while they're, um, they're setting up and they're doing their sound check. And then, you know, it sounded okay. Like, um, it, it was like, whatever, like it sounded fine. But for some reason, the like singer guy, um, front man, like started like, uh, yelling at the guitar player about something. It was like really like flip of the switch. <laughs> um, like it, they were like all buddies and laughing really quick. And then he just like turned and like started yelling and it was like really fucking weird. And then, um, after the sound check, um, the same guy, uh, came up to us and it was almost like, um, like, like bipolar syndrome or something where he was like, Hey, how do we sound up there? We sound good. Like I didn't hear any, cr any fucking cheering from you. Like shit like that. Like he was like fucking pissed off. And I was just like, like, um, like I was like, dude, like, I didn't even say anything. I just, I straight up walked away while he was yelling, but like, um, he was just like, I was just like, I didn't have the energy to tell him like, dude, I'm tired. I'm not, I don't feel like, you know, cheering you on to be a pal. Like whatever, dude, like I'm going to go take a nap after this. Like, like it was just something weird, you know, like awkward. <laughs> and then after like the show, like I, I went and saw him again. I was like, like, Hey, you guys sounded great. Like, are you all right? Like, and he was like, yeah, dude, man, I'm doing great, bro. And, like, just like carried on his business, like like nothing happened, and I was just like, "What the fuck, man?" <laughs> was there any cocaine involved, <laughs> dude? Honestly, who knows? But unless he did a line like right there on the sound check, like when he was fucking like right about to yell at that guy, like I don't know, but he didn't seem like a cokehead or nothing. But... Okay, well, that's good. That's good. How about you, Gary? Any uh, wild shit that you saw personally? Uh that one what he was what he was just saying right there um i know that one was weird i'm tr trying to think the only the only uh the only uh um thing i can think of is just some of the some of the, like dumb dumb experiences of just um you know going to a venue and then you know the the people running the place are just you know they they don't have their shit together you know yeah remember that um like the characters. Oh my god! Yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, so definitely, like, if you have ever, if you ever want to be a sound guy or uh, a touring band or anything in the music industry, yeah, just letting you know, nothing in the music industry goes the way it's supposed to. Uh, um, I can imagine. I mean, I was in, the, I was in the Marine Corps. It was just hurry up and wait. That's that's the motto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, this was that same tour. And this was supposed to be like the first night of it. And um, it was like uh, this little town, relatively little town. And um, we played this. It was supposed to be at the sports bar called um, Characters. And like, so we like got told like, oh, set up and sound check is like at whatever it was, like three or four. And so uh, we roll up and uh, we talked to the guys and they're like, like oh yeah like you guys can start unloading shit outside um and just line it up right here and then um it's just gonna be a little bit because the game's still on and like but like 
uh, we'll start setting up the stage here really quick. This, that, this, that. So, um, so we listened to what they said and we unloaded the shit outside, um, right by the door and, um, and then they kept, uh, changing the story on us. Um, and I, I just kept, I think we were just kind of like, well, how much longer, how much longer? And like, you know, um, they're like, oh, just a little bit longer, just a little <laughs> bit longer. And then, you know, it's fucking nine o'clock at night. And like, it's like, dude, it's, uh, how much longer, man? Like, uh, it, it, you know, but like, I think eventually, like, I just fucking gave up and I, I put all the shit back in the trailer because I was like, what the fuck's going on here? Because like, we were supposed to be like the back line and all this. And like, uh, nobody even told us like anything about like a change. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just like, what the fuck? Like. You didn't think to tell like the the backline band any of this important ass shit like just nonsense. Yeah. So, uh what are y'all um I asked about the the metal community over there in Arizona, but uh in particular, are there any bands that y'all, you know, appreciate what they're doing out there in Arizona in your home state? Like anything like like um uh oh, shit, uh, Gate Creeper come to mind. You know, I was just wondering if y'all fans are theirs. You mentioned I that. am totally not a fan of Gate Creeper. Sorry. <laughs> um, there, there are some pretty cool bands out here. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think because like uh, some of these bands like aren't as active as they used to be. Yeah. Like, um, I'm trying to think. Like, there was a there used to be like a punk band out here. I think they still do shit sometimes. They were, they were called Krovac. Mm-hmm. and um they were basically like almost always like one of the opening bands on like whenever a bigger punk band um would come to town and i always thought they were like funny um and uh definitely funny guys and um let me see who else can't think of anyone i'm like i, I used to really vibe with hmm. let me see there wasn't there wasn't that uh because there was Krovac. i thought there was another like I thought there was another punk band too, but I can't remember. I can't remember the name right now. Hmm. See, uh, it's like, um, mo- there isn't really like that many thrash metal bands out here. Yeah. It's mostly like Arizona is like a big, like, like grind core spot. And then like back in the day, it used to be like a big metal core spot. Yeah. Um, but like, I'm not really into those genres that much. Like I only on like only at a very surface value, but yeah. like, um, there, there is some pretty great tight bands out here, but I just don't really listen to them just because I'm not like, uh, into that style or anything like that. Man. Um, I have a really good friend of mine who's starting this black and, uh, thrash metal band here in Lafayette. And I will definitely, uh, push that EP to you and, and, and Garrett and see how y'all like it. Maybe I could do like a little, a little show here in Lafayette. That's what I'm. That's what my angle is right here, just to get y'all okay, two guys yeah. together. Because yeah, run it, be, man. because Toby, man, he he's he's been playing now for about uh, a little over twenty years. He said, and uh, I mean, he like Exodus, freaking Metallica, Slayer, all the stuff that you mentioned, Sepultura, even, and like you know he can't help himself but listen to something you know a little bit more uh, Norwegian, <laughs> uh, black metal stuff like that. He he in you know, he found a way uh, to put that together in his own unique uh, sound, man. And uh, I think whenever that band comes to be, whenever they, I mean, they got like I want to say twelve songs written, and uh, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be something to be heard, and um, and something can't be denied, just like intent, you know. And that would be that would be my dream scenario to see y'all two y'all two bands that get together, man, because. Uh, Kika solo, Jeremy, your solos. I, I told you when we did the little test call, man. Like your solos are fucking unbelievable. Uh, you could tell that you you definitely work hard at your craft. So, congrats, my man. Thank you. Absolutely, man. Y'all got anything? Uh, y'all want to push? Uh, I I want to keep y'all too late, man. Oh, it's it's okay. Um, uh, definitely shout out to um. Bomb scare, huge fan of Bomb Scare. Um, I think they're basically done though, so like uh sorry. And um <laughs> uh, there's a band, um they actually like just broke up, but they're from Spain. I believe they're from Spain. If it's not Spain, it's Italy. Um they're called uh, Crimson Slaughter. I think they broke up, but they they had an album that came out uh a couple years back. Um 
And I fucking jam that shit a lot. Um, also, fucking Vindicator from, like, Ohio, I think. They're also, like, really fucking good. Um, they just had a new album come out. Yeah, that's about it, I guess. Well, like, man, unless uh, you got more questions. Oh, uh, man, uh, all I, my question is, is when when can I expect to uh, hear some new tunes from Intent? Like, when, when's, uh, y'all give me, like, a rough estimate of when y'all go in the studio and all that good stuff? Shit, I don't know, man. We're just uh, waiting on this equipment that's to come right. in. And, that's right. And uh, mm-hmm. it'll, it'll be done as basically as soon as that shit comes in, like, uh, give or take a few weeks or a month or so. But like, as soon as that shit comes in, like it's ready to fucking go. Like I'm, I'm so ready for y'all to hear it. And like, it's been uh, like basically like two or three years in the making now. Cause um, besides like um, the revolving door of members and shit, like uh, you know, I was always uh, like, like, how do I top this, the the other album? Like, so I, f- I feel like we totally fucking topped the other album and it's going to, it's going to kill some fools. So well, cool. it's, it's ready. I mean, our first album is like wildly, uh, or our second, our, our second album we're about to finish up here is definitely a lot of, uh, uh, uh Oh, gonna be a lot uh, different sounding than the first album, but in every good way possible. It's gonna be like when you heard um, "Killing Is My Business" and then you went on to uh, "Peace Cells." It's ah, like yeah. a huge jump in, in quality, in quality. Of, everything, of everything: the songwriting, the production, the mixing, the the just overall songs themselves, the playing. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it, man. I, I really am, and because I've been jamming uh, Vox uh, ever since I, since Dee Dee told me about you guys, and I'm glad she did. So shout out Dee Dee for hooking this up, uh, man. Thanks again. I really appreciate y'all the time that y'all gave me. And before I close out, what's y'all favorite track off that? I mean, I know I know it's like you know, y'all wrote all the songs together. It's like all y'all babies. But if y'all could just like you know pick your favorite child right now off that album, which one y'all want to close out with? Oh man, I don't know. Uh, there, I think um, you know, I, I think um, the 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 two that really come to mind for me, you know, is uh, network failure. Um, that one I feel is just um, just a high quality song as far as like it's it's always it's it's moving it's always moving. Um, and it just, I feel like it gets better as it goes and goes. Um, and uh, and then I think um, Insight is just a, a straight, straightforward, you know, you know, thrash song. That's you know, that's you the know, one, that's that you, the one I keep going want, back to. You want to hear, like if you if you like thrash, you know, that's like the straight the straightforward thrash song that you expect to hear from a band, you know. So I mean, network failure and insight, I feel, are like the the top two, um, the top two for me, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, All I right. don't know where his thoughts are. Oh man, uh, uh, yeah. So like, I do like most of these songs, like still, and like they're always like in the fucking rotation live. Um, network failure is a fucking like top quality. Like, if you only heard one intent song, I would want it to be that one. Um, or number 12, I love number 12, it's a lot of fun, or, um, Insight, like he said, um, um, a lot of people's favorite is In My Blood, but Mm. I feel like, um, I feel like, like, there's, there's better shit, like, I, I don't know, like, I just feel like that song's, like, kind of basic to me, but, like, uh, uh, people really like that one, um, also really, really like uh empty graves uh just because um that solo i went really fucking hard on so like uh shout out to that song but like yeah for <laughs> sure like those th- probably those three songs like empty graves or i'm sorry um network failure number 12 and uh insight probably those three i think that if you, you never heard an, an intense song like just listen to that i think the general consensus between us three is insight so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to close out with, with insight again, Jeremy and Garrett. Thank you for your time, man. I really appreciate it. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing y'all once y'all pass through. If y'all come through Houston, I'm going to go, or New Orleans, whichever it, it may be, man. Just uh, keep me in the loop. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. All right, man. Y'all have a good one. Have a good weekend. See you later. All right, bud. Trash,